If you're watching this video, the chances are you're interested in playing some career mode but don't quite know where to start. Well, that's ideal because today I'll be sharing all of the helpful tips that I've learned from over 20 years of playing the game mode, plus some things I wish I knew when I started playing it. We'll look at setting up a youth academy, creating a tactic, making transfers and some more general tips that are still important to enjoying the mode. So let's get started and let's run through everything I do on day one of a save, starting with picking a tactic. So now we're in career mode, it's time to decide on a tactic. We're going to have a look at the defence first of all because this is the most important part of the save. So have a look and see if you have three good quality centre backs or if you have only two. So for Forrest, they have Willy Bolly, who's a little bit slow. They have Nikita, who's really good, and they have Felipe, who is also really good. So we're going to go for a four at the back, just simply because we only have two good centre backs. Now, we need to have a look at our wingers. Formations with wingers are really common in a back four setup, while maybe a back three uses wide centre backs or attacking midfielders who drift wide to supplement the width. So have a look at the wingers at your club next. We've got Brennan Johnson right here, of course, one of the best young wingers in the league. We have Scarpa who can play out on the wing, Gibbs White can play on the wing, Lingard, and we also have Emmanuel Dennis who's under a striker, but he also can play on both of the wings. So we're definitely gonna be using a winger in our tactic. The final decisions revolve around the striker position and the midfield setup. We need to choose if we're gonna have one or two strikers, and then the rest of the players will be playing in the middle. So for Forrest, we're going to be switching to a 4-3-3 formation with an attacking midfielder as well. On the left we'll have Dennis, in the middle we'll keep Taiwo Awanyi, on the right we'll have Brennan Johnson. In the middle right here, Gibbs White, we'll have Yates and Danilo, and then the back four just as it is right here. So this is already a pretty good tactic and it's probably the right one for our team. But don't forget a couple of extra tips that I've got around squad and team. My first tip is to try and rotate your team as much as possible. You can see on the right that a player has fitness and sharpness. Sharpness affects how well they perform in game, while fitness is just how much stamina they'll begin the games with. You want basically all of your starting 11 to be on 100 sharpness at the start of the season. You also want them to be on 100 fitness, but this might not always be possible. The easiest way to do this is to rotate players. Maybe we want to give Nico Williams a game because he's younger, we'll get his sharpness up and keep Aurier fit. We could do the same on the other side with Richards and Loddy, and you can see how this would work throughout the season. From this point on, it's time to decide what kind of career mode you like to do. You can do youth focused. People have been able to win the Champions League using only players from their youth academy, which we'll have a look at in a minute. You could also do a road to glory. Wouldn't really work with Nottingham Forest, but a team like Burton Albion right here, you definitely could do one with. A journeyman career uses the job offer feature, which you can see in office right here, browse jobs, and after a few months, you'll get a list of new opportunities where you can choose to be their manager instead, where you'll just be switching jobs a lot. Or you could just do a regular career mode as well, where maybe you just see what happens in your career mode and go on without a plan. This is perfectly okay to do. So now we have our tactic set up, and before we progress the in-game date, it's time to create a youth academy. This might sound super difficult to do, but it's actually really easy. Just head over to the youth scouts page right here, buy three youth scouts, and send them out to different countries. There's only one thing you need to know about these scouts. The higher judgement rating a scout has, the better the players they'll bring back, while the higher experience that the scout has, they'll bring back more players. If you want to know a little bit more about how this works, check out my full video on how this works at the top right of this video. So to make sure your players develop and reach their potentials, try following these four tips. So do the training manually until you achieve an A grade in every single variation. So if we go into a training day right here, you can see that we can change these drills and each drill makes a player better in a certain area. So for passing, shooting, set pieces, dribbling and defending. If you get an A grade, your players will increase in sharpness and their fitness will also stay higher. You can see some of these players' sharpness has already gone down. If we simulate all of them right now, you can see they gained about 2 sharpness and lost 10 fitness for every training session they were in. Of course, if you want your players to develop as well, make sure you're giving younger players game time as we mentioned earlier. Coming from Ultimate Team, this might sound a bit strange, but sometimes you really should be going with a weaker team rather than your 11 best players. You can easily set up another team sheet just by copying it right here. If we just rename this Nottingham Forest Youth, right this, or Ute because there's not enough letters, we can simply just put all our younger players in here like this. So you can have Sam Surridge, you can have someone like Aron Mangala playing on the wing, who cares? That will just be our younger players so we can easily rotate between them 
just by clicking on these two boxes. Also, you should be looking for younger cheap players on the transfer list, because once you're developed, you can easily sell them for a lot more money. You can easily find them by going onto the transfer page, searching transfer listed in this box right here, and just having a look and trying to find some players who are in their early 20s like Christian Kuami right here. Also don't forget that the Youth Academy can be used to make some really overpowered players. You begin with some of them to start off with and you can see the potentials that we got right here. 91, up to 86, 83, these are all good enough to be top Premier League players if we develop them. It's really easy to fill your youth academy with 90 potential players who usually can reach that rating, so make sure you're taking advantage. Okay, so the last thing you're probably going to want to do before you actually play a game is sign a player. So let's have a look in our scout report and see who our scouts recommend we sign. Well, I quite like Alvaro Morata. I like him on FIFA and I like him in real life. So let's shortlist him and view him in our transfer hub. You can see right here, we can see all the information about him, all his stats, you know, he's good at jumping, he's quite fast, his finishing's decent too. So we're going to approach the buy and on the right hand side you can see a suggested value for our player 31.1 million we'll get a couple of cutscenes. these are always fun to watch when you start playing career mode but after a while they can get a little bit boring we're just going to offer his exact market value they're negotiating up to 33 million and diego simeone is happy with that so now we've agreed the transfer deal it's time to offer him a contract if we go on to negotiate right here we'll just skip some of these cutscenes again crucial squad role i like that that means he's going to play a lot you can also change the contract length it's all done in these sort of sliders this rotating thing but three years looks good to us release clause we're not going to offer him a release clause even though he would have one being in spain and he's currently on seventy-eight thousand, so we'll offer him eighty thousand and a couple of hundred thousand just to sign on hopefully he'll agree this and he absolutely has and then we'll get a cutscene showing alvaro Morata walking into our training facility here he is Welcome to the club, meeting our manager, so on, so on. We'll get a player rating right here. Doesn't really matter too much. Again, we'll just skip this, but of course, have a look at it if you're interested in seeing what your rating is on FIFA. So now we can go into our squad and you can see right here, we can place Tyro Awanyi with Alvaro Morata. And we're going to do exactly that. That's how easy it is to sign a player in FIFA career mode. So now our tactic and youth academy are both set up and ready to go. We can finally progress the date. In your first month, there's three things I think you really need to know. The first is that you can easily skip training and email messages if you want to progress faster by simply pressing triangle or Y on Xbox and bypassing training days. We're going to do that just to try and get through this a little bit faster. Preseason is perfect to experiment with difficulty. This is both the in-game difficulty and the sort of restrictions you're applying to yourself. Career mode is a lot more fun when it's a challenge, so make sure you aren't winning 9-0 in every single game. There's no shame in moving from professional to something like semi-pro. You can do it at any time before any match simply by going into game settings here and changing your difficulty on the screen. While I do recommend you make the game challenging, don't expect to win every single match. And also, if you are finding it too tough, consider using sliders to sort of tune the difficulty to exactly what you need. You can do sliders again by going into customize. If we go into game settings, you can change specific things for both the user and the AI to maybe make the AI run a tiny little bit slower. That will make the game easier or make your players run slower and the AI a little bit faster if you want things to be a bit more difficult. There's so much you can change in here. And if you search FIFA sliders, you'll get massive lists of suggested values for all of these things. So make sure you check those out too. So now let's have a look at some final last tips that are all sort of general ones I think you need to know. I'd recommend you save quite a lot because you will make mistakes with transfers and scouting. Maybe you want to replay matches and you can do all of this by going into customize and saving your game. Of course, you can also just have a look at the help tips inside FIFA at any point by pressing start or by pressing the options button on PlayStation. And you can see little introductions about everything in here. It'll give you these little tips like this one, for example, just give them a read because they are actually quite useful. And also know that no matter how badly you do, you won't totally lose your save. Even if you get relegated from the worst team on the game, you'll always get an offer from another team and you get this chance to build your way back up. But basically, that's how to start off with FIFA Career Mode. Hopefully you enjoy it and if you're interested in finding out what teams you want to play as or anything else, make sure you subscribe to this channel because I do loads of videos and save ideas and things like that that I think you'll really enjoy. But why not check out the two playlists on the video right now? They're both series I've done. Maybe you can learn a little bit more about FIFA by watching me play. And thank you for watching. Cheers and goodbye.